Stanford University. The motivation for this talk is basically the, the recognition that big data is now, the value in big data is now being recognized by a lot of companies. And so they begin more and more to deploy massively parallel process system in order to get the value out of the data. Now, those systems, despite rumors otherwise, are pretty costly. They require serious investment to acquire and to operate. And so companies would like to look at them and to make sure that they are used efficiently, effectively, basically to get their money's worth. Uh, the metrics I call KPI, Key Performance Indicators, are basically metrics that are based on data where you bring performance and tell you how well you are doing. And the point is when you have multiple system, you have to have, you want to have KPIs that you can define them in a way that you uh, send, uh, unleash them against data from different systems and come up with comparable results so that you can have a wide perspective on the diverse system that you have. And I'll talk about some detail in a case study looking at eBay deployed system, Teradata and Hadoop. Okay, so MPP systems are, I, in this form I want to say just, but they are, they are common in the sense that they have large number of nodes connected. They connected by high-speed network and would like to provide, par uh, to uh, partition the work in parallel across the nodes in order to get to the speed up and the scalability. Of course, there are differences in the way they store the data and, and process the data, but this is an opportunity because different system can provide different functions, uh, have advantages and disadvantages relative, so if you deploy multiple of them, you can have more analytics than you can do in a single system, in a single system alone. Uh, Thomas already talked about the, um, this, the analytic platforms, the MPPs that we have at eBay. Here is the non-box, um, the non-box version of it, and I apologize for that. This is uh, a victim of the difference between Windows uh, PowerPoint and Mac PowerPoint. So, can do anything about that. Uh, so basically, this compares, we have at eBay, we have uh, three system architecture, already mentioned in the morning, EDW, which is a Teradata RDBMS. Uh, this one has 120 nodes and five petabytes on it. Singularity, 256 nodes and 37 petabytes. And Hadoop, 1,000 nodes and 25 petabytes. So this diagram compares them relatively qualitatively based on seven dimension. You could see that um, Hadoop, which is the green one, brings more CPU and it's more flexible in terms of programming because you can run any program you want. You're not confined to uh, SQL. On the other hand, and CPU is kind of midway, ah, I'm sorry, Hadoop is kind of midway in the storage, and, but Teradata system provide uh, are scored higher, let's put it, in basically how they manage multiple account, concurrency, workload management, and so, and so forth. Now, in order, uh, <clears throat> in order to get uh, in at eBay, we have something else that was mentioned also in the morning. We have users. And users, really, the way I understand, they don't care that much about the structure of the system, etc. They send jobs, they want to get service. Therefore, if you want to keep the system, the, uh, the users happy, which in my opinion is one of the major objectives of these systems in the first place, you have to look at the system from their point of view. And that point of view is the system basically as a service facility also known as a job shop. And in a job shop, this is basically uh, the famous etcher, etcher etching that shows that users come in and this can be any service facility, including uh, your MPP system. They come in, they stay, they wait, they get some service, they leave, either they complete their job or not, but 
what they want, they have different expectation from what this system will provide them. And, and uh, they also have multiple usages on the systems. And just like in every service facility, you have to make sure that you know what the cost structure is on the system. Therefore, you need KPIs that tell you, so what is the capacity of the system? What can I get out of the system? Putting in other way, uh, what did my money buy me uh, in this system? Also, you want to know, is the system utilized efficiently? Those are parallel systems. Are there parallel capability utilized well? which we called parallel efficiency. And then here is, they also have a lot of overlap in jobs that you can run on multiple. And here is a question that was posed quite a few and some of these motivated this work is, so how much does it cost me to run a job on either system? And what is the quality of service which you get? And so you come up with KPIs that you want to train them on the data for multiple system to, in order to do to give you comparable analysis of them. Now, here at eBay, we, not here at eBay, at eBay, we worked on quite a few of those KPIs, which I touch upon only a few of them. Uh, those have to do with the service level, how you manage users in different groups, how, you, how, how fast different users based on service policies can consume system resources, what is the uh, service level that they get, and so forth. Do they, are their queries run efficiently in the systems? And uh, here we'll focus on three aspects. One of them is the parallel efficiency. The other one is latency. And the third one is the cost. And we'll go in detail into them as a case study. But at the core of all of this is KPI, there is a concept of resource of, con of uh, the unit of consumption of resource. What are the resources that queries or jobs consume and how can you compare them based on that? So let's first look at Hadoop. Hadoop, basically a typical job in Hadoop, any job in Hadoop, well, a typical, has uh, one or more map tasks and zero or more reduced tasks. A map task is usually split away. Uh, well, it's split into one or more what's known as task attempt, because sometimes they send the multiple in order to, uh, to do proactive processing. And when the first one is done, they killed, uh, the system kills the others. That does identical computation all the task attempts. And those task attempts, basically, in order to be processed, are assigned to what's known as a slot in a node one of those parallel nodes, the data node. Now, a slot is, and they, uh, a, um, a task attempt occupies a slot exclusively. A Hadoop system is configured with so many map slots and so many reduced slots on every node. And so the slot second is what I call the unit of resource consumption. Because if you have so many nodes and so many slots, this is what you can do. You cannot do more than that. Now, Hadoop currently, the current version, also has uh, the configuration is static, that every node is configured with fixed number of map slots, fixed number of reduced slots, and those cannot process tasks from the different type. So map slots reduce, uh, uh, process only map task, et cetera. And so here at the, in Hadoop, we'll talk about uh, uh, slot seconds as the unit of resource. And when you look at the job, you want to know what is the total number of slot seconds that this job consumed. This is how much of the capacity of the system the job took. In a similar fashion, an oversimplified diagram, I admit it, and uh, you have like in Teradata, which is RDBMS, you have the optimizer, you have large number of VPROCs, also known as AMPs. And when you submit a query there, the optimizer goes and split it into as many as it finds necessary uh, AMPs to be processed. And so the unit of consumption here is AMP second, which is kind of equivalent to the, to the slot seconds. And, and we'll tie them together uh, shortly. 
okay? So one of the questions that you want to ask yourself, now that we know that a task or a query goes in parallel on multiple nodes, what is the efficiency? How can they use it in parallel? Uh, okay. Uh, I'll put the whole thing because I don't like this animation thing anyway. So basically, this is what happened in real life. Those are the parallel tasks or the task attempts. And this is, I couldn't, I couldn't put here thousands of, of slots, so I'll put like six. And you see that typically, every, this, is, this is a slot or this is an amp, and it takes them different amount of times different number of slot seconds or amp seconds to process their part of, of the job. And if you have this in balance, I'll call it just made up inefficiency zone, this means that the system is not perfectly balanced. The job is not run perfectly balanced. This is, if you run it something on the right, whatever that one is, if you run it this on the right, basically you share perfectly the job across all the slots and all the seconds, and this is the best you can do on the system because it will run faster and it will clear all the nodes faster than here. So you wanna go from the left to the right, but, and this would be a perfect parallel efficiency, but one thing that you have to realize, and it was not realized until now, you cannot always do that, because this is the pattern that you find on the systems. Now let's look, this is, I hope you see the similarity between the two patterns, although you have many more data points. Let me tell you what this slot is. On the right, you have singularity system, we have 160,000 queries, and for the graphics fans of you, I played with the size of the dots and the transparency, so we won't get just one blob, we'll see the pattern. What this one shows, this is the amp second, the total amp second that the query required, and this is the parallel efficiency. As you can see, there is an upper limit of the parallel efficiency that can be achieved based on the total amp CPU seconds, okay? And so, if you want to go and look where is my inefficiency in the system, you look into here, into this, but the traditionally, uh, people use to look at the parallel efficiency and say, let's look at the lowest and try to increase them. It shows that you cannot increase it to one in here, so basically the idea what you want to do is to, to look, oh, now what that? Okay, <laughs> did I turn off something? <coughs> it's me, you told me not to touch one of the screen, you don't, yeah, this one, you told me, <laughs> don't touch this button. <laughs> we don't know what it's doing, he said that. <laughs> okay, I got a training on this, sorry. <laughs> okay, so basically the point here, this pattern was shown, I looked at multiple teradata systems that we have, very much like that. It can move back and forth at the different system, but this is what you can have, and so the idea is you want to take first those, uh, those queries that have farther from where they can be in there, and then you can try to work with them to improve them of the data. Uh, so the parallel efficiency divide here as the average amp seconds divided by the maximum amp seconds over all the amps. In a similar fashion in Hadoop, if you take the trouble and go into the job tracker data and try to sum up, this is for 1,000 jobs. This is what I have. Uh, the PE is basically node base. You look at all the nodes how much each node total slot seconds, and you look also the average per the maximum, and you get a similar, a similar um, pattern that shows you basically their uh, MPP character is showing in here. Okay, now this, I want to look at it from a slightly point of view, a slightly point of view, which means if I take the latency, remember when we are totally perfect, ideally perfect balance, you have the minimum possible time that it takes to run that particular job. On the other hand, you sit with a stopwatch in your hand and count how many seconds it took you from submission until you get it back, and you take these two numbers and you divide them, and you see that the two systems provide 
very similar pattern that shows you that can, you can look at the different, uh, uh, the different uh, uh, time expansion of that uh, in both cases like in one framework. One, one thing that I would like to point out, the importance of this is not just a, um, just a KPI for the sake of KPI. Some people talk about looking MapReduce job and putting them on the cloud. One should understand that from the cost point of view, if you own the cluster, the cost of the query is the total number of slot seconds or amp seconds that you have. When you go to the cloud, you take the whole cloud, the whole cluster in the cloud for the total duration of the system, the total latency. So basically what this one shows that you can have in some queries, you can have two or three orders of magnitude higher cost on the cloud than you do it on your own infrastructure. So just people who want to deploy it should pay attention to this thing. I thought this is like interesting in this case. So we talked a lot about the cost. Okay, so how do we analyze the cost of this system in order to compare them to see that we get money's worth, so to speak, and benchmark. So what we do here, this is basically the approach. I used three data sets. One of them I got from finance, and you can understand that I'm not gonna share the particular numbers, especially because eBay announcing tomorrow. Uh, so basically, I look at the finance and I go into the detail and, and I find what is the total cost of ownership per year, okay? And then, this is a little tricky, but I'll talk about it in more detail in, in a short while. This is what is the capacity? So what is the maximum number of slot second and amp second that you can get from your system? So this is the resource unit, which is slot second. You have to estimate them, and we'll talk about two ways of estimate to uh, validate that. So once we have that, I can do by simple division, what is the cost per resource unit? And if I take the resource unit to be a million slot seconds or a million amp seconds, this will be my cost. And now I go and, and run identical queries, just run or comparable jobs, identical queries, and see how much resource units they consume, and then you can find out what is the cost of running query on one system relative to the other. Let's go a little bit more detail because I know you are eager to know that. So MPP cost, basically what you want to look at, you look at the capital expenditure annualized. You look at the system, this is how much, you know, to buy the boxes, the thing to put them in place. And then you have power, and here you have to be careful because like in eBay, we are in multiple data centers. So in every place, not just the amount of kilowatts, but also how much a kilowatt costs you and different places cost you differently. Then you have hardware maintenance, software maintenance, you have space, you have labor. Uh, and so you take it all together and this tells you how much this system costs you per year, okay? Then, we look at the capacity that we'll calculate, it, we'll calculate in the next slide, and we find what is the amp seconds per year that I can get, or per day, or per whatever, per unit of time, and similar in Hadoop. And this will give us the cost per, and notice, the cost that we are going to work with is the cost per million resource units. This is how we are gonna prepare them, ah, compare them. And then, of course, we go and do the same slot second, amp second times the unit cost, okay? Now, so what is the cluster capacity? You have an MPP, I mean, what is it? So I, because otherwise it's kind of hard to do that. So what I basically did, I looked at it top down and bottom up. Top down, basically, if you have so many nodes and so many cores, okay, the, for Teradata, you have the factor two for the hyper, <coughs> hyper threading. Uh, and in Hadoop, you have the nodes and the slots. You can get more than that. And then I added to each one of them uh, a discount factor because I know a priori they cannot go all the way up there. The reason there is between 85% and 91% uh, is because they have all kind of system administration stuff. We have here a TCO from Teradata can explain the details. To me, it's just a number here for now. In Hadoop, it's a little trickier. In Hadoop, if you look at the number of configured map slots and reduce slots, 
and compare them to the historical, num the historical amount of map slots used in actual versus reduced slot, if these two ratios of the configured map slots to the reduced slots, this is MC to RC, and map actual to reduce actual are not the same, you cannot use the system effic uh, as efficiently as you want. Give you an example. If you have, for example, eight to six map slots to, to reduce slots, and in actual you have eight to one, so the maps go in the eight, and then you can only have one, five reduced slots cannot be used. So this, if you do a little arithmetic, you get to this factor. Won't dwell on it because I'm gonna be kicked out of here shortly. Uh, okay, so basically this is top down. But then you ask yourself, I mean, configure this all based on the configuration. I mean, configure the system is easy. You go to, to ASCII file and just change number. Does the system, can the system actually accomplish that? And I did that by looking at two very busy systems at eBay. This, this system is an EDW system that I know it's operationally trans really heavy. And this one took, per hour I summed up the total M seconds. I looked at 10 business day, average out for every hour, and you could see that it consistently bring uh, about 85 to 90 of the capacity. So I said, you know what? This system can deliver as we expected in the top down. In Hadoop, what, we uh, uh, what happens here is basically it also can deliver, this is also hourly, but it's not as consistent in here because uh, this was not managed in a way to push it consistently throughout the day. But the indication here, even if you want to go, is that uh, so both system the con can actually deliver to this capacity. I can take the capacity that I took uh, 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 top down, and I, this is the capacity. Okay, this is basically just another argument, another uh, evidence. This is Hadoop by minute. Minute by minute, what is their amp seconds, uh, slot seconds, that actually being consumed, and you see that at some minutes they get close to one, and one is normalized to the capacity I calculated. So cool enough, I'll give Hadoop here, let's suppose you can get the, the number of nodes times slots times the discount factor, the same goes for Teradata. Okay, having all of this, let's see what we can come up with. This is um, basically the summary of the results, particular data, and mind you, these are normalized number. There is no dollar sign in here, okay? What we see here, here is basically the system unit cost. Remember, the cost is the cost per million resource units. You see that Hadoop is way lower than EDW and Singularity is in the middle. Well, Singularity was designed to be lower cost than EDW. However, and this was, uh, and this has to go with it. So I went there and did identical Hive queries. So it's identical SQL code. I ran it on uh, Teradata, on both systems, and on Hadoop. And I measured the number of slot seconds that consume the number of amp seconds. What you see is that at um, EDW requires the fewest. Singularity is kind of the second. And in Hadoop, it takes by far the largest number of slot seconds of resource units, I would say, as per the, the resource unit. So the cost per query is when you multiply these two together and you get this is the relative cost per query, where singularity in this particular one is by far the lowest cost for this particular query and Hadoop and EDW come about the same. Now, uh, again, I also looked at latency and, but this is not fair uh, comparison because this depends on the loading in the system. As we talked, EDW was very highly loaded and Singularity at that point that I measured was not that, so of course, I mean, they went faster. And Hadoop is by far, then this also not a surprise, latency, and this is the parallel efficiency of the three of them. This, this query, and there are gonna be another trend, uh, meta trend, so to speak, this is basically table scan and summation. 
And then I took another one, I took three table joints. So, okay, let it sweat a little bit more, work a little bit more. And you notice, I mean, these patterns are very similar, but notice that now the Hadoop, when you require, remember Hadoop gives more CPU, all of a sudden, okay, you know, the cost per query goes down, becomes very close to singularity. And then I tried my best and found yet even a more processing query. And because I don't want to repeat this, the, the four, I kind of summarize all of them in this particular. So this is the first uh, query that I talked about. This is the second. And this is the third one, when you can see that now the cost per query is somewhat lowest on, on Hadoop than on the other Teradata system. The, 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 this is a very, I mean, people say, you know, two, two dots is a trend. These are three dots. But still, I mean, just the beginning of a trend that shows that maybe the type of query that you run, if it requires a lot of processing and everything, may be more efficiently or less costly run on Hadoop. And maybe more scanning, more data will run on uh, Teradata on either singularity or that. And notice that. Thank you. And so, and remember, I mentioned maybe. I don't know. Those are just three. And I want to mention if there is a guy from Vertica here. There was a very nice uh, blog post by Vertica that compared a very complex query to find the number of triangles in a social graph between Hadoop and their columnar um, database. Highly recommended. And so, summary basically, just to recap what I presented is KPIs that deal with in a unified manner on efficiency of the system, on latency, on the cost. And this KPI can be used basically to benchmark, to see how you improve the system, et cetera, and the configure system to minimize the total cost. And some lessons, those are meta lessons. Uh, basically, they exhibit similar service-related performance. If you look at it from a service station, they are pretty similar. There is a trade-off between TCO and the resource utilized by a query. And despite some rumors to the contrary, none of this system is free. That's all I had to say. So we probably have time for like one quick question. I can see one over there. Um, can someone? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, can you please comment on split size and the relation of the Hadoop split size to your efficiency measures in Hadoop? Okay. The load and indexing time, you need to push data into Teradata. And um, <clears throat> how much you try to overcome maybe high f um, uh, imperfections in the context of SQL. I didn't try to optimize and I didn't try to understand why. This is basically an empirical study, I say. These are the two systems. We have very, so, very sophisticated, very skilled architect, both for Teradata and Hadoop, and say, you did your best. Let's see how the system, as they operate right now. Now people say, people ask me, ah, you did Hadoop. You did, I'm sorry, Hive. You could have done better had you done Pig or run Java. Of course I could, I mean, but you want to have, and then people will say, you know, maybe they're not comparable. I just want to look at comparable. If you run comparable, we heard that analysts like to run Hive. Take comparable as they stand right now, compare them. OK, so uh, thank you very much. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.